Hi everybody. Happy freaking Wednesday. Today we're having cheer chat and we have a very special guest who has been uh, on the podcast before. Haley Marie McLean Hill. She's a former a Gold Rush cheerleader for the 49ers as well as the Atlanta Falcons cheerleader. She is a CEO and now a women's business coach. She wants to share what she has learned in her journey to become CEO of her own businesses. And she called it the cutest thing, Boots to Business. And I hope you guys join. I'm like ready to take notes and hear all that she has to offer. So I have like a, a very non-alcoholic drink today. <laughs> I would have loved Rosé, but I'm going to behave myself. So whenever she joins in, um, we'll just kick it off and get started. But I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. Um, next week, if I'm able to go live, we'll catch up again on all of the NBA auditions that are happening that have kind of, I think, happened. I mean, I'm seeing training camps and all kinds of other things going on. So we have a lot to catch up on uh, next week. But Haley is here, so I'm going to add her to the chat. Hey Michelle. Hello. Hi Michelle. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I feel like my head just took up the entire frame, but you know, it's just being a big headed girl. <laughs> no, same. It did the same thing for me. I was like, whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Here we How's go. your day going? Oh, it's going so well. It's Wednesday and just knocking things out, you know, middle of the week. So yes, what yes, about you? Yes. Same crazy busy day, but I'm glad that we're moving closer to the holiday weekend, you know, but Absolutely. I'm so excited for this though. Boots to business. I, I, <laughs> I feel like I've screwed that name up wanting to say business boots and all sorts of different things, but let's just <laughs> tell everybody for the benefit a little bit about yourself. Um, I suggest everybody go listen to this salute episode. It was so good hearing about Thank your you. entire journey. We're going to have that part somewhat kept out of this effort this conversation but I do want you to introduce yourself and let people know what you're going to talk about and share with us today of course thank you so much for having me on again oh, you're incredible okay. such a supportive sister and I appreciate that so try, much girl. I, try. I know everybody no, does <laughs> <laughs> but hey awesome. everybody I'm Haley I am like Makita was saying I was a former gold rush cheerleader Atlanta Falcons cheerleader so that's how we have connected and now I'm a new CEO and a new women's business coach and my new passion for helping women in this different type of capacity like I've helped girls make teams I've helped I've coached teams before and now this new realm of making money and business and like really diving into your passions and making money from it is just so untapped I think in our space and I would really like to offer mm -hmm. just a, a cool different perspective and like a perspective from someone who's been in your boots Boots, yes. boots, boots, boots. We should, I mean, I'm not drinking here, just so you know, this is not rosé, but it's almost like if we did have, like, how many times does boots come up in this conversation? I uh, swear, Andy, <laughs> we can watch that slide. I'm not like that. But anyway, we will watch. just, <laughs> that is I just didn't want you though. to think I'm just tossing it up during our You're very, fine. you know professional totally business chat today um <laughs> so tell people before you even get into that though about the businesses that you've started I can't even believe you have capacity to add women's coach to the mix or business coach to the mix but tell us about your businesses because you have multiple correct I, mean, I do <laughs> I do yes three now and it's so fun <laughs> to keep organized we're like okay what's going on so yeah. I have my first baby was Seek and Set Free. It's a women's retreat company. And we basically have been putting on retreats all around the U.S. for groups of women. It's really centered around wellness and doing really fun activities instead of just, like you said, like sitting around and getting drunk or going to another bachelorette party. It's like actually yeah. having intentional quality time with women and, you know, sharing these really exciting new activities and adventures with each other. So I love that. I've I'm such a travel, I love to, like, I love to travel, I absolutely love to spend quality time with girls, and yeah, dude, it's been a blast, we have been in business for over a year now, so that's super exciting, and you and know, COVID is starting to, well, semi-behave itself, I don't know about that, but hopefully, you know, the impact from yeah. that is lessened, so that's yes. good, 
Yes, okay. Business number has. one. <laughs> this is number two. <laughs> literally, I call them like my babies too, because it's literally like I have like three babies now. So uh -huh. number one is Seeking Set Free. Number two is Torch Warrior Wear. So that is my actual product-based business. So I turned the t-shirts that women in the military can wear into bodysuits. So as we all know, as cheerleaders, look good, feel good is like the thing yep. to do. And I feel like the military was lacking in that sense of like, you know, we're all, we're still women. We don't want to wear these boxy t-shirts and scratchy t-shirts all the time. I'm like, why can't we wear something like a bodysuit? And I took my little butt down to LA, found a manufacturer, found, you know, created my website. And I was like, all right, put it on TikTok. And it's blown up since then. And we've been in business for about a year too. So that's really Crazy. exciting. Yes. Crazy. So it looked like you were just at like a, I don't know what the meeting was, like a convention or something. You got a table. I, I'm not. Oh my gosh. And then I'm going to stop interviewing you <laughs> and you're going to just share the, boot, the boots to business. But We're getting there. We're getting there. Don't <laughs> worry, guys. They're enjoying. This is entertainment for them. Yes. yes. So, yeah, I went to Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, and there was a joint women's leadership symposium. And there were thousands of military women there from all over the world, actually. There, I met some women wow. from New Zealand, from Africa, and everybody was there serving. And so I had a booth, had my bodysuits there, and all I have to say is nobody else is getting business at their boots. Uh, not at their boots, at their boots. <laughs> <laughs> so made some everyone. sales. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh That's yeah, awesome. they love it. Thank I you. love that you found a specific need and just filled it. It was really that simple. I mean, but like brilliant at the same time because clearly nobody was thinking about us looking good and feeling good and being comfortable. You know, I mean, yeah. obviously I have not served, but I would imagine if there was a, a choice between boxy, scratchy stuff that guys wear versus stuff that I would want my skin to touch and, you know. Right. It's just, yeah. it's like part of the culture where it's like, it's an, you know, it's an honor to wear the uniform and everyone feels that way. But sometimes it's just like anything, there's an opportunity to revamp it and just to kind of modernize it. I, I yeah. don't know if you've ever heard of the brand Figs before. It's um, no. for healthcare professionals. They like revamped scrubs. So instead of these like really oh. uncomfortable, you think about the scrubs that doctors wear, it's like papery, nasty. They turn them into this really nice material. And I really look up to that brand because they did something very similar where they found the mm -hmm. need and they, and they turn it into something really special. Awesome. Okay, yeah. so then baby number three, and then people will know that you are more than qualified to be sharing all the jewels of wisdom that you will with us today. But what's your third line of business? Well, my new baby is Boots to Business, and this is solely focused on women who are pursuing entrepreneurship. And so just being a woman of, of color, of a veteran, um, a former cheerleader, I just think that it's important that I just, I never realized how important mentorship was. And this, I mean, you think about cheerleading, we've, we've, we've been coached since we were babies to get to the position where we are now, right? It's like, you have a coach to teach you stunts tumbling, you know, your motions, everything. But then when you get to the real world, it's like, okay, like, where do I go now? And sometimes it's like, kind of wandering blindly. So mm -hmm. for me, when I started my, my business journey, I hired a business coach because I knew myself, I was like, if I don't have someone holding me accountable, if I don't have somebody telling me where to go, if I don't have someone to like, bounce off ideas or to have those days where I'm like, oh my god I don't want to do this anymore or like just those times where it's just tough you know like to kind of yeah someone who understands she has her name is Shannon she is has absolutely just been my rock she's been like my personal cheerleader and it's been wow. incredible and without her I just don't know where I would be so I just have been inspired by her and she's like dude like your vibe is awesome. I think you can connect with other girls who are at the position that you are at. You should go for mm -hmm. it. And so it's like, and it's interesting how a little bit of that like imposter syndrome comes in a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not here to say I'm making millions of dollars right now. And I'm not. And so I think the cool thing about my advice is that it's coming from a perspective of somebody who has had a nine to five job, who was a professional cheerleader, not making a crazy amount of money, but has now right. turned like, her passion into something that it's bringing in extra cash and I'm able to scale it and I'm able to live a life that's more fulfilling. And so mm. I just, I'm really excited to share what I've learned so far in my year and a half of business. And I think what I have kind of prepared is a quick and dirty, but also there's, you guys can go to the link in my bio and schedule a 15 minute virtual coffee date with me. And we can talk about your ideas. I think just having that 
that window of like, hey, like, let's just chat it out a little bit. And then if you guys are interested in my one, my private coaching, that link is in my bio as well, which it would be a six month program and we would get your business actually executed by the the end of the six months. Yeah. Wow. Because you know what? I just want to say before you launch into it, it's just that so many people have like great business ideas or things that they've always wanted to do, try passions, things that they just, you know, it's just like that freaking little push where you're like, you're doing it or quit preparing to do it. Just like go for it and do it. And so mm-hmm. I love that, you know, it's just a little bit of an extra push from somebody that you can relate to on different levels, even understanding how to do it all. I'm assuming, especially balancing so many different things. So I'm really excited that you were willing to share all this information. There's so many people joining. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I want to make sure that I'm going to be like the comment moderator ish a little bit if I can. Of course. Um, Just to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Okay. Michelle, you know, we both love Michelle. She's in here saying I hope she's best. He's in the same place at the same time. I love it. Hey, um, okay. And then I just think we, everybody's just saying hey and we're gonna just get started so I want to oh wait I missed one okay Haley yes you are awesome you definitely have lots to share with ladies for boots to business yes okay so we're just gonna go let's go let's do it let's Let's dive in okay Okay. (laughs) I want to preface this and say for anyone listening now live or who's going to listen to it later this Mm -hmm. is for all of the women and men I also coach men as well sometimes. And okay. these are for the men and women who are looking to, who, who are, they feel like there's more. They feel like they have this idea. They feel a little confused on how to go about it. And they're just interested. And they're feeling like, you know what? I'm ready to take this step, this action, to invest the time into learning more and to learn more about myself to see if this is truly what I want. So keep mm. an open mind. I think yep. this is a very, like, you know, everyone just keep, okay, that's a very interesting point. I like to bring in different perspectives and I like to tie it back to cheer as much as possible because I truly do believe like business is coachable just like cheerleading. So I think that's a lot of takes the scary like part of building a business away because people are like, oh, you're either like a millionaire or you're not. And it's not true. If you have the basics, you can be successful just like you can be a successful professional cheerleader. So I don't know, like if we could do this, we could do anything, period, point blank, end of story. <laughs> I that's mean, insane. yeah, exactly. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. So I have five easy steps. So you guys better be taking notes. You guys, the notes is like the way that you get successful in life. <laughs> so take your notes. Um, we have five steps for you. And I like to start with the three pillars of how I go about my coaching. And it's three A's. It's alignment, ambition, and achievement. So just Think about that when I am diving into the five steps of how to start your business, because you want to make sure it's something that you are aligned with. You don't want to be doing something just because you're making money from it. You want to be very energetically aligned with it. Number two, you have to be ambitious, which I think everybody who's listening to this is. So that's not any, that's not an issue here. And the yeah. number three is achievement. You will have success if you are resilient and you persevere. So let's dive into number one. Okay. Okay. Number one is finding clarity. And I have my notes here too. So if you guys see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. Okay. My notes are out of reach, but go ahead. I'm thinking. (laughs) Yes. So number one, find clarity. The biggest first step is to know who you're trying to sell to and who and like what they're actually going to be looking for with you. So you have to start with your market research. You've got to dive into who your ideal customer is, where they are, what they're interested in, what their pain points are, what, where is the need and how can you fulfill that? Especially when you start thinking about your marketing, you really want to target those specific responses that those people are telling you and that research that you found. And you really want to go after that at that beginning stage, because a lot of people have this idea and they just throw it out there and it's like, Oh, we'll see how it goes. It's like, well, who are you actually trying to sell this to? And like, and who's going to know if you're not going to be very explicit and clear with that? So that's big yeah. with number one. Mm-hmm. The other thing with number one is clarity within yourself, with your visions and your goals with your business. So I know some people are like, I want to start a business and this is like, you know, I want to start a clothing brand. Let's say that. And I'm like, okay, sounds great how much time do you want to put into this? Where do you see yourself in three years? How much money are you actually trying to make? 
are you just trying to make 10k to 10k a month to pay your bill to be able to go shopping and to maybe go on a couple trips like a year or something like that that's totally fine but then there's other people who are like I want to make three hundred thousand dollars a month and this is why and this is the breakdown I think having that clarity and what you want in your specific in your life because everyone's different like you can't just think I'm starting a business here it is I want you to really map out what makes you happy like what makes me happy in my business is not gonna be the same as you so that's number one Mm -hmm. yes like it awesome number two create the framework so it's just like anything, just like cheerleading, you have to start from the basics. You can't just jump and you can't just think that, oh, I'm going to do a double back handspring and you don't know how to do a handstand. So you really have to think about the core framework that you need to build it. Number one of creating your framework will be to, of course, the legal side of things, establishing your LLC, getting your accounting going. You should definitely be keeping bookkeeping or hiring an accountant to help you with that. Because for me, I will say, I dove too fast into the execution and like the product side of things before thinking about the backhand side of business side of business. Uh And and the thing is, is you have to be able to juggle both. So the first thing that you should think about is that framework and say, here is everything in place. So when money starts coming in, it's able to handle it. Right, right, right. As you know, Makiba, you're, you're so smart. You know I mean, this. I'm still here to learn. Like you said, open <laughs> time, see what I'm not doing. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh, but go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So did you, and do you want to tie anything to like your approach, just like you did here in terms of like how your business ideas came to you, just, in, just so that we can learn from the examples or is that part of your coaching that people need to sign up for the deluxe version? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would love to share. I'm always here uh-huh. to share. I think, Um, From my personal experience, my idea came to me, like, I have always liked fashion and like, and and nothing was very forced. It was like, I woke up one day, I had gone out the night before with some friends to celebrate my friend's promotion. And I was wearing a bodysuit and jeans. And I like woke up the next day. And I was like, dang, like, I wish I could be this comfortable at work. And I was like, wait, why can't I? uh, uh?" And then, you know, with this, your brain just starts to go, you're like, okay, no one else is doing this. I'm going to go for it. And so it's just, it just kind of, it came to me. So like I said, it didn't feel very forced. And once I knew what I wanted to build, I then did my market research and I put it on TikTok and I said, who would be interested in something like this? Or is it just me kind of thinking very crazy? And so many women reached out to me from like, kind of like the joint women's leadership symposium. I met women from New Zealand, from Germany, from France. They were reaching out to me and they were saying, we love this idea. And I was like, well, I guess I have something, some people like it, I'm going to go for it. And so I tell people all the time, you're not for everybody and everybody's not for you. You don't have to sell to everybody. Like I have so many people who reach out and be like, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, well, it's not for you and that's okay. And there's no need for me to get angry or upset or off track because I have so many things that I'm focused on and so many things that I want to scale my business to that I'm like all of the negativity just kind of goes away and I'm like they'll jump on one day they'll understand one day and I'm gonna be focused over here so you know it's all in like once I started understanding you know okay now I have my audience and that was my step number one I found my clarity I was like I want to quit my job and I want to go full-time with this and that's what I did I was like that's what I want to do and this is how much money I want to be bringing in and that's what I started to work towards. And so then I started building my framework. I hired my business coach. I got my accountant. I got my LLC. And I was like, these are the steps. And I'm just going to follow it. And as long yeah. as I stay persistent and I go after it, I, I know my work ethic is going, to, is going to speak for me. So I said, let's do it. So that's my first two steps, really. Okay. Like, Thanks for like, adding that in there. Because I just think, <laughs> as you, again, we can all relate to you. We've seen, I mean, this is like incredible, explosive growth in a journey in a very short period of time. So just hearing anything about your steps and how you applied that in your own case is awesome to share. So anyway, keep You're going. Right. You're right. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I hope everyone's keeping up with us and we're just yes. checking in on y'all. Get your little water or not water break. So, you know, Ooh, what did I just do? What did you Lighting do? Lighting went out. Hold please. <laughs> keep going. Don't hold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we have number one. Just to backtrack, number one, find clarity. Number two, create your framework. 
Number yeah. three, we're going to actual ex actually execute the basics. So you're going to want to be very decisive in this time frame. You're going to want to be very present in your market, but don't focus on being perfect. Like perfect. I know a lot of people are like, oh, this mm -hmm. wasn't this wasn't right. This wasn't right. Oh yes, I'm glad this is helping, Ray. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what you really want to do is take action, and you want to start like I was talking about do those handstands, do those cartwheels. So then you know you and you build that practice. So then you can execute those back handsprings, those standing tucks. And it's the same mm -hmm. thing with business. You really have to start executing. You want to even schedule in like now for me as a full-time entrepreneur, I schedule my day out just like I would with a nine to five. I make sure I have my morning routine. I make sure that I come to a safe environment and a very productive environment to get my work done I like bookshelves I think they're very like calming <laughs> and books and just being in that I like libraries so I go to a place where I feel very productive and I get my work done and I have a schedule and I make sure I have tasks that I can accomplish every day I have my smart goals I start to create you know, my mission, my vision, um, and I have my routine down as an entrepreneur and as somebody who's mm -hmm. starting a business. You can't just think that, you know, executing without any schedule, you know, without any freight, like any, what am I trying to say? Structure. I, like, structure. Like, because you're not going to like, I mean, I love the idea of just having like, these are the things I'm tackling at a time as you approach each day, because you can't do it all in one day, but if you at least have like things that are achievable in that time frame, and you kind of have, like you said, like the structure or the environment that you feel most productive in, um, that's the start. I mean, you can't just wing it day to day. I mean, maybe some highly successful people do, but <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. absolutely don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's like yes. even like putting in those little times where you go and you work out and you step away, like those rest periods are really, really important as well. Like you think about the nine to five, it still has a lunch break in there. Like, do not kill yourself. I think a lot of people think when it comes to the execution phase, oh, I'm going to be up 24 seven, like Elon Musk, or I'm going to, you know, like be doing everything at once. And it's not true. And I think for everybody, it's different. It looks different and everyone's body's different. But for me, I like to get my workout in. I like to wake up around like seven o'clock. So then I'm up early before, you know, my boyfriend's up with like the animals and everything. And just like finding calm and peace within myself to really produce. And I think that's what really helps me execute my daily operations, as well as envisioning what's next for my businesses. Can I ask you something that you've said about like kind of like not focusing on being perfect? I think that's such an important um, thing for people who are probably in our space that are probably very type A and perfectionist and probably, I mean, I even remember just in starting this podcast, like, you know, you want to do all this preparation and making sure that you've done all your research and then it can become almost paralyzing of just starting the darn thing already and not worrying about it being perfect. Can you talk a little bit about that? Of course. So I read this quote like two months ago and like, like I said, I've been in business for about a year and a half and I read it. It was like pre being present is greater than being perfect. And I just remember mm -hmm. days when I was like creating content and I just wanted it to be perfect because I'm like, I know my vibe. I know exactly what I'm trying to give to my audience and this is just not working. And then I would just not be posting. And the thing is in, the, in today's world, it's like, you know, you have to, exp and you're in this experimentation phase of this business is very experimental. You want to put things out there and see what people are reacting to. Maybe people are going to react to that less, um, you know, calculated post because it's real. Maybe it's going to be, you know, you just taking a second to step away and say, I need a moment with that. And that's okay that I didn't get that done today because I wasn't meant to get that done today. Like yeah. not thinking that, like, and even when I lose customers, think like I've lost customers. I've had unhappy customers before because something went wrong or, oh, they didn't get their bodysuit on time or, or, you know, I messed up something small. And before I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure. I messed up one thing. And then you, then you think about it, you're like, okay, you deal with it. You hand, okay, it's handled. I'm not gonna let this ruin my entire day because there's so many other positive, good things that are going on and things mm -hmm. I need to be focusing on to better myself. Starting a business and, and having a business is constant problem and solving problems and creating solutions and innovating, which I'll get to at the end. And you'll re and your audience will speak to you and you're going to make mistakes. Like 
I am not perfect by any means. I've made so many mistakes as a business person, but it's, it's liberating to know that I'm still here and still, and still scaling, even though I had a couple things where I was like, oops, I'll learn, I'll, I'll learn next time on that one. Just make sure you're learning your lesson from them. Right, right, right. And not focusing just on whether it was perfect that first time, because none of us are obviously perfect. But I think sometimes that can be paralyzing if you're, if you hone in on the mistake or just where you aren't thinking like of solving problems and trying to just kind of move past it. I think some, we're just hard on ourselves, right? Like, that's just the truth of the matter. Yes. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's things that I like to talk with my women that, and men that I work with. It's like breath work and stepping outside, going into nature, taking time away from your phone and like just allowing yourself to be human. Like it's just yeah. what, and knowing your intention. Like I know my intentions are so pure when it comes to my business. I'm like, if someone can't see that or if someone like an honesty, it goes a long way with business, right? Let's say I did mess up there or I missed it. They put it in and I missed it and I haven't given it them, given to them. They were supposed to get it two weeks ago. And they're like, where the heck is my order? And right. I'm like, right. I go, my back. I was like, I am so sorry. And I'll be like, this is Haley, the CEO and the founder. And I am so sorry I missed this. And I'm going to give this to you. And I'm also going to give you a discount for the next time. Just knowing that they are seen and heard and understood. Most of the time I handle the problem and they understand because I'm like, I'm new, I'm figuring it out and I'm so sorry. And here is how I'm going to make it right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I love it. So <laughs> executing the basics daily, like you said, having that routine and that structure and understanding that it may not be perfect. If you, you achieve what you can and you kind of focus and hone in on, on solving problems and yes. Yeah. Okay. What's, are we at number four? <laughs> Don't let me, I just like wanting to, <laughs> Make sure that I'm not, like, turning it into a podcast interview. No, girl. You, this is perfect. <laughs> the flow, the vibe is everything, always. Okay. So, always. Oh, good, good, good. I hope everyone's good over there. We're checking in on y'all again, everything. Yes, yes, yes. I think there's just been a lot of people joining. So, thank you guys for joining into the conversation, Boots to Business, with Haley. And we are going through her steps of kind of the business coaching that she's been doing um, as she's moved through her journey as a business owner for the past year and a half ish. So we're on number four. We're on number four and I'm going to do mm -hmm. a quick little ad lib to number three, because okay. a lot of people, when they hear execution, they want to know how. And so I will say for a lot of on online businesses, what I use for my content creation is an app called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Mm -hmm. Canva's mm -hmm. fabulous. I'm sure a lot of people have heard it, but that's a big one. I use Calendly to make sure I'm scheduling. Like I was talking about having my, routine down and I know what's coming up next. So if I'm meeting with a manufacturer or if I'm going to have a call with an investor, I have them booked through my Calendly app. So it's boom, boom. It's right there. I don't have to worry about like matching schedules and everything like that. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good. And then I also use um, Notability. Notability is an app that I keep, it keeps it in full, like your notes and folders. So I'm very much of an idea generator. Like at all times, I'm coming up with like 10 ideas. And I'm like, wow, Haley, like, just focus on one thing, please, today, like, please. <laughs> but Notability is awesome, because you can break it down, like, um, compartmentalize your life. So I have Boots to Business as a folder, then I have Torch, and then I have Seek and Set Free, then I have Personal, then I have Accounting, and then I can kind of know, like, and keep myself uh, organized. With the notes that you need to take versus, okay. Correct. So Instead of just I'll, like give, a big... I'll give exhibit A of what not to do. Like, <laughs> I use Google Keep, right? Which maybe okay. I'm totally underutilizing some of the functionality, but there's just literally sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky notes, but they are not organized based on whatever train of thought or subject matter that it could be about. So that sounds like a good one for me to look into. I mean, I know what look into where they all are, but it's not like it's organized. So that's that's awesome. Right. Yes. Those little tools will help you just feel a little bit more on top of it. I think it's just like what works for you. A lot of people use like OneNote too. It's very similar, but mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. I am like a ride or die for notability. So that is big. So those are three quick little tips that I like to use okay, for, awesome. for that, for executing. That's big. Okay. So now moving up, we did find clarity, create your mm -hmm. framework, execute the basics. And number four is money mindset. So this is huge. I think that you're executing, right? You have your framework. Things are going down. And like we've talked about, and I can breeze through this one a little bit, but there's going to be days when there's, things aren't going to go right. There's going to be days when, like, you don't feel like you maybe even deserve, like, 
your success. I know, like I was talking about mm-hmm. before, like that um, kind of imp- that, that imposter syndrome a little bit where you're like, um, is this, you know, if, 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 is what I'm giving to these people, like, is this um, worth it? Or are, I can't believe they're paying, you know, for me, my body suits are $60 a piece, right? And so that is kind of pricey to a lot of people. And I get a lot of people saying, like, that's too high, that's too high. And it's okay because they're not my energetic match right now. I'm selling a tactical brand with embroidery. It's made in the U.S. It's, it's, you know, it's just a custom material that is only for, you know, these body suits. Like, there's so much that goes into it that if people don't understand that we're just not an energetic match. Think about Lululemon, yep. right? They're right. selling their stuff at 100 plus of um, 11. I was just in the store the other day as a reminder of, like, Yes, why that cannot be my normal place. <laughs> but yeah, right. But no, yeah, people don't yeah. question all the time, like certain brands when it's like the same analysis that you, it's hard to go through for yourself to say, yes, I'm worth it or what I'm doing is worth the value Correct. that I'm bringing. Yeah. Correct. And it comes to, again, like just having that money mindset of like, okay, how, where did I like, and knowing the numbers, like that's why I have my account and we go over the numbers. I'm like, okay, I do my research on, what other bodysuits are being sold for? Why am I pricing it at this point? So you know in your heart, like you know in your heart if you're overcharging or if you're not giving a, a service or a product that's not up to par. But right. when you know that you're putting your heart and soul into it, you better demand their their heart and soul just as much. It's, it's very much of an aligned opportunity for because if you're putting so much into this and you're not getting anything in return what are you going to become depleted exhausted over it not trying to deal with that anymore so what you really want to do is take the time to think about really where what's this money looking what is the money looking like how can I put the best product out there at the price that's going to fulfill me and my work and my customers Mm -hmm. and go for it and know you deserve it you deserve it. That took me the longest time because I really? thought, yeah, well, you know, I think I was, I just started getting into business and learning more about money. And I always knew the kind of like, eh, like oh, money's like this and save yeah. and, you know, but now when you are responsible for, you know, this mo- other people's money and like, you know, even mm-hmm. hiring people, I hire contractors, I hire, you know, I'm responsible now. And I don't have a nine to five. This is my full time. So I'm like, oh, wake up, Haley. You need to be more aware and you need to be hungry and you need to be persistent when it comes to the money you deserve. So I Mm. think a lot of people have to get through that next step. And that's a consistent thing throughout the process where I'm reassuring that person like, no, 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 you deserve that. And how about yourself? Because if you are giving up your full time job, I mean, you have to pay yourself as well and, and not underpaying yourself because you are the entrepreneur. I've heard different things on that point. I mean, do you, did you struggle with that at all? Or you were kind of new based on looking at your numbers, like I need to be able to, to live, survive, pay bills, etc. So like, you kind of probably went through that analysis, so you could be comfortable in, in what you're paying yourself and not tempted to kind of take less than you deserve, like you said. Absolutely. There is a great book and it's called Profit First. And I think anyone who's interested in starting a business should definitely read it. I'm in the process of it and my accountant, she swears by this book and we have Mm -hmm. outlined my banking and my accounting pretty much to mirror this model that this book talks about. And it discusses how you break down your income and your revenue into percentages of like this, like, 50%, 50%, and I have to double check with the percentages, but fit, like, let's say 50% will be saved for taxes, right? You want to think about taxes and that side mm-hmm, of things. Mm-hmm. Then you want to think about the another percentage, like I think it's like 10 or 15% is reinvestment into your business. So you don't want to overly invest into your business because it's going to be a dimish, diminishing return. So for me, right, I have a product and I have, I have two products, well, three right now. And that's perfect for right now. I don't need to go reinvesting into getting 10, 12, 14 other products and just being in the hole because my three products are doing great right now. Maybe I can bring on another one, but that'll be in my percentage of what I can reinvest into my company. Think about with Mm -hmm. investing in employees. So there's like a system actually, which is super cool, which I just started to learn about. I'm like, okay, so you can, basically see a pie chart and be like, this is going to be for taxes. 
when I get them, when you're bringing in revenue, this will be for taxes. This will be for reinvestment. This will be for operating costs. So mm -hmm. let's say you use Canva. Let's say you use Notability. Let's say you use these other apps to help you run your company. And then the other, the last percentage is profit for you, for the owner. It's for you. Like you're paying yourself. And so it's already built in there. So it's like, okay. I know that I'm giving this money so I can go get my nails done because that's important to me. And so right, that's what's right. going to make me feel good. And so it's a system instead of just thinking, I'm just going to do it this way. Or take what's left after doing. I love that. That's a really great. I mean, I'm excited to take a look at that book. Yes, profit I, first. Profit first. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Amazing. Okay. So that is number four. Now we're rounding up to the last one, number five. So we hit, Find clarity, create the framework, execute mm -hmm. the basics, money mindset, and the last one, and I kind of hit on this, is innovate. Innovate, innovate, innovate. I okay. think that innovation is so, it's just, it's so important because the world, you think about how quickly it's changing now with social media, with everything. You have to keep a pulse on what's going on with your customers and you have to keep a pulse on what's going on inside of you and your ever evolving life as well. Like mm -hmm. you think about it and I tell people, I'm like, when I started my businesses, I was in the military. I was also cheering for the 49ers and I was at a point where I was like, in, and when I say innovate, I think of it as like, you know, a revamping your life and revamping your product or revamping your business. It's all in one. And I was like, I need to, I need to change. I need to make a pivot. And this is when you, you execute, you go back to execute because once you realize that you're in a position where you're ready to switch, switch, you know, switch paths, you're like, okay, this product, you know, isn't doing the way, right. The thing that I want it to be doing, identify and execute. There's no like sitting with it and feeling upset about it and all this stuff. You're like, well, oh, what do we, you find, you, you, you identify and then you execute. Another great book that I think everyone should read is, extreme ownership it is all about really taking ownership of your life and also in business and applying that in business because if you take complete ownership of your life you're not going to sit around and feel like victimized like oh this person didn't buy my thing and it's like no what did i do to not give them what they needed or and vice versa and you can apply this in your personal business and every other aspect of your life so i think innovating and taking ownership is the next is the last step because then the circle starts again and you start to find clarity again. You create your framework, your new framework, and then you execute and you make sure you know that you deserve all of the good fortune that's coming towards you because you've been working your ass off. So that's those, it. Yes. Those are my five steps. Well, let's <laughs> talk a little bit more about innovate too, because um, what I appreciate about your businesses too, is just that you, did something that really wasn't being done before. That's what I think of when I think innovation in terms of like, cause you know, a lot of people have ideas and I don't know, I mean, I'm not here to be anybody's business coach at all. <laughs> Listen to Haley y'all. But, um, <laughs> but I do really get excited and um, appreciate when people have clearly put in the thought to think of doing something that, you know, it's not like if it's been done before you shouldn't do it, but it's just like thinking of you like what stamp that you're going to leave and like how you can do it differently, better, whatever, like just that I innovative mindset so that you, cause I think that's what keeps you growing and keeps you curious and keeps you seeking like constant improvement is when you at least are focused on innovation, whether that's your actual business idea or how you approach running it. Because like you said, the landscape is changing. Like today it's Canva, tomorrow it could be like some completely different tool that everybody's <laughs> using across some some new social media platform that's not TikTok. So like, you know, you constantly having to be um, hungry, like you said, for that, like what's the, not where it gets out of alignment with what you've already started, but just, you know, kind of having this sense of like continuous improvement, if you will. Absolutely. I like that. No, absolutely. And to hit on that, I think, really where that innovation comes from is your passion for your business, right? You are, when you start a business, you can't be so married to what you created in the beginning because it is going to mm -hmm. change so much. Like when I started, when I first started Seek and Set Free My Retreats, I thought I was going to be doing fitness retreats, like in my backyard or something like that. I was like, oh, I was going to have some girls come over. We're going to get, you know, in shape. And like, that's what we're going to do. And then I was like, okay, wait. <laughs> 
And then now what we've done is we've gone all over the world and done, we've integrated it and we have innovated it in a way where it's still there, but it's growing and, and changing in so many different ways. Same with Torch, right? It's like, it comes from my love for my business and my idea and for who I am and who I'm growing into be. You think of a relationship, right? Too, you think of how love evolves and like it's you bit like I told you before like my businesses are like my babies and I'm like loving them in different ways and in different phases of what they're in right now like the mm -hmm. startup right like there's startup the startup phase and then there's the scaling phase and then there's maybe the selling phase when you sell it like there's so many phases like you have to be fluid you have to be innovation innovative and you have to be open to change so it's an important point because in knowing like you said when there's a need to pivot because sometimes people hold on a little bit and don't want to like let go of what they had in their mind as a way of doing things. I know it's like a different point about pivoting, but I really love that you're speaking to like this community because I feel like especially when you're dancing and maybe you're reaching, I don't know, year three, four, five, whatever, where you start, there's just some little nagging little voice sometimes that's in your head of like, well, what are you going to do in this when you have all this free time and you have like, right. when you don't have this huge commitment of being a professional cheerleader or a dancer and um because you did start while you were actually on the team were you thinking of that need to pivot um after you knew that you were going to be done dancing or like kind of how did you work that into your approach at starting your own businesses yeah you know it's interesting i actually was going to go try out for the dallas cowboys cheerleaders like after that's my what I think we had like left off in our little chin chat after the interview. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Yes. And so I had, I had this whole thought in my head. I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm starting my business, but I, I don't want to stop dancing. I still love it. I still want to go after, you know, my dream of like being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader and do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just found myself, there was just these little whispers in my head. Like you're saying, it was like, Haley, yes, you can. And I don't ever steer anybody away from like shying away from a challenge or shying away from adding things onto their life because I think there's so much abundance out there that you can do this and this and this and this. Like you can, it's it's proven. Like I've done, I was a military officer. I was an NFL cheerleader. I was running two businesses. Like you can do it. It's just finding the time and having that mentor to walk you through that and to have that support system around you. Mm -hmm. And there was just a, a moment where I was like, this a moment of clarity where I was like what do I really want in my life and I was like do I want to move to Texas away from my manufacturer of my I'm just, when I'm trying to build this this brand and I have these mm -hmm. people relying on me now where it's not just Haley going to you know enjoy um, dancing in Dallas stuff like that it's like now I have a community that is looking up to me and looking up to my brand and I feel a sense of responsibility and when you mm -hmm. feel that I felt that and I was like I need to, and I'm not going to say I'm never going to maybe go try out. Who knows? I'm staying in yep. good shape. Who you knows? Never know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But I think at this point in my life, I just was very, I reflected and I just thought, Haley, like, what is, and I always use this quote. It's like, what is like making you feel like, what is burning that fire inside of you? What is, what is setting your soul on fire right now? Like what is getting you out of bed every morning? And it was my businesses. It wasn't cheer like that. And it, mm. it, right now in this moment, and I was like, well, listen to me. I'm listening to my heart right now and I'm going to stay and I'm going to build this baby. So listen to your wow. heart. Yeah. Stay with yourself. You know, it's so important because it's going to change. And who knows? Maybe next year I'll be like, screw this. I want to do You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> there's room and there's time. You can kind of do whatever little detours. I mean, I love that you, yeah. I think that kind of, like you said, that alignment and, um, clarity within yourself of what it is that you your soul really truly wants and what you can't stop thinking about what you get creative about or excited about what you think about when you're in the shower like random times you wake up in the middle of the night like with some great idea it's like those things that kind of can guide you um yes. in the direction that you really want to go because I think we sometimes feel like we have to do certain things versus what we would really want to do if we could wave a magic wand but having time to sit with yourself and really sort through that um but I think it's just, like I said, really great for people in our community to kind of hear this conversation because um, yeah. they might have some things that they're swirling around and they're thinking about. But it's sometimes like the idea of starting your own business seems gargantuan and overwhelming. 
and mm -hmm. you could go to Barnes and Noble and pick out a bunch of books that you think are going to just be like, this is going to make me <laughs> go out there and do it. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's just being able to relate to somebody that says the right thing or just kind of understands where you, where you might be stuck. And these are like, you said, tangible steps, having a business coach or just kind of being part of a, a community that's going through the same thing where you have that mentorship. Because I do think in this yeah. space sometimes, and not maybe like this space, but I love that you hired a business coach separate, not separately, but I'm assuming she's not a pro cheerleader or what have you, but. No, but she did have a dance background though. She did. Interesting. She did, yeah. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But you know, just that um, feeling of being able to like trust somebody to, to understand your journey and your path and like, where if you tell somebody an idea, they're not going to kind of like go run off and do it or, you know what I mean? Like, cause I think sometimes people are afraid to ask for help because of worrying about people stealing their ideas or just, you know, or whatever they're worried about. I just think this is like a safe, wonderful space of like, you've been there, done that, and you're doing it. <laughs> um, yes. And it's just something that people can, I, I feel like really, really relate to. Absolutely. And I have two things on that because mm -hmm. one, one, I think, again, it comes from my, like, my intention. It's so, I, I remember being, you know, me a year and a half ago, and I was just like, what the hell? Like, I need help right now. And I was just like, I want to, I want to give back. And I think the more women give back to each other and, like, encourage them to be ambitious and to go after their goals and to be open and honest and, tr and trust each other to help oh. each other get to the top, like, mm -hmm. my, it's, it's interesting because my, you know, I feel so strongly about let's build this thing together. And like you said, it's like, it's not about yeah. me. Like, Oh, I'm going to take your idea. It has, it's nothing. It has like no place in that at all. And it's so, it's so special because she has taught me and she has keeps telling me, she's like, I'm here to make you money, girl. Like, let's go. She's like bringing me clients. She's doing this whole thing. It's like such a That's business beautiful. can be such a sisterhood as well. And you know, and she was telling me too, we've had so many conversations because she did have that dance background. She never got to the pro level, but she did in high school. And she's like, dude, like, what better entrepreneurs than dancers and cheerleaders? Like, you think about what we have to do every game. Like, we prep on our off time. We are completely type A. We like to be very detail-oriented and perfect people. We're team-oriented as well. Yes, and yes, just, like, yes. we, our drive is just different from different sports. I feel like we are so meticulous and, like, also so – we're such people people too we're so personal i was about to say this this <laughs> ambassador stuff we're selling brands all the time day in day out we're doing it on the fly showing up in an appearance and, and having to put on this i mean it's not even like a persona but you're just you're constantly thrown into so many different situations where you're rubbing yes. elbows with corporate types you're man you're just a chameleon i think it's a great yes. skill set that we have as dancers that goes it just crosses so, so, so many things. Yes. Yeah. And think of, and think about the people we meet. I think business, like there's, it's so interesting how like business is so a lot, very solely sometimes on like who, you know, like I'm not a <laughs> lot. Like it's your network is your net worth is your net worth. Like everyone says, you know, it's like, there's going to be people that we have been had the opportunity to be in the room with. And like nobody else I know has ever had the opportunity to be in the room with like, you know, an NFL owner or like a, a you know, another a star or something like that. or so whatever, like traveled with a team, like these opportunities, yeah. you have to look at them and it's, it's just learning from them and understanding how much you bring to the table and how people gravitate towards you. And it's like, dude, you're, you already have it. Just, take ownership of that and go for it. And, you know, like I said, for me, just having that person in my corner to say, you've got this. Like, are you kidding me? You're awesome. It's like, sometimes you forget because you're surrounded by all these awesome people. You're like, oh, well, everybody's right? cool. You know, <laughs> this girl's freaking amazing. And this girl's amazing. This guy did this. And it's like, yes. And it's like, but now think about how you, how much of a gem you are to the world. And it just, yeah. it's so special because you're so multifaceted and it's just, there's no better entrepreneurs. That's all I have to say. For the pro I mean, I'm just, world. Ima I'm just imagining <laughs> you at that c conference that you went to, like how naturally all of that must have come to you to be there at your booth, talking to people, engaging with them, getting them to try, like all the things that you do, like you get people to come over, take a picture, like all of the things that you do as a cheerleader and how that probably totally came into play while you're at the conference, making those connections with people. Because um, they're like your fans. Exactly. They're like you, exactly. they become your fans. 
<laughs> you mm-hmm. know and you get to know them and I care and I'm like I want to know your story like we're naturally curious people too I feel like we're like well what are you doing like it's just like it's such a place of uh, abundance and love it's it's so positive yeah. it's really and you're making money okay you're making money as well which is amazing also man Haley I'm so glad we did this like this is great because it's just I, I don't know I feel like there's so much information out there and I know my brain like it'll just become wah 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 at a certain point but if I'm listening to somebody that I know that I respect that like I can connect with it's a whole different it's just like my brain opens up in a different kind of way so I'm just so happy that you were willing to to share I mean do people who are in the room have questions we wanted to leave um, some time so if you had any questions you wanted to join into the conversation please do I mean there's a lot of people in here Haley that have joined along the way <laughs> and um, yes. I would love it if you have questions this will be posted on my page and um, Haley I think you can do the same on yours um, just don't quote yes. Instagram stuff. but anyway but yes <laughs> and I'm sure people can um, reach out to you as well but can you go through the kind of the links and stuff and how they can learn more, find out more information, et cetera, et cetera. Of course. Again, thank you guys for sticking out with us. I hope you guys learned something. I am, you can find me at I am Haley Marie. I am underscore Haley Marie on Instagram. And then just go to the link in my bio and we can schedule a quick 15 minute call to discuss your exciting ideas and just walk you through the process of what's next. And then I also have one-on-one business coaching where we would have six months together and we would build your business from ground up and it will be able to scale at the end of that six months so i'm super excited I um like so yes. you start and then by the end of that six months if you've done all the things together as part of that program like you will have something tangible to show for it at the end of the six months like cause sometimes Absolutely. that's what people need too it's like don't let me just like sign up for some kind of course or something and then it's kind of all on me and then it may happen may not like you need a coach like coaching is different I think than just yes. taking a course or class you know 100% that's why I like how it's called coaching because I've coached like younger teams and it's you really I'm, I really look at myself as almost like a leader and someone to see the bigger picture on the outside and say hey don't go that way oh go in this direction do this blah blah yeah it's like, when you have like a dope coach, like, dude, the sky's the limit. So I think, you know, I look, I, at first I was like, do I have the experience to really like help these people? And then I think about it. I'm like, Haley, like everything that you have learned and everyone has mentors, right? Like I have a mentor as well. And like everyone is learning, but if I can give back and I can help somebody start something from scratch and like, no. And I, I'm like, I have the, the knowledge and the, in the heart to want to see you succeed. And I think that's really important to find someone who cares, like actually yeah. cares, not just a random like investor who's like, I'll give you like $20,000 to like do this thing. And then they're, you never see him again. It's like really part a partnership. And, um, but I'll hold you accountable. You know, I got my military background. I'll tell you what you need to do. <laughs> I would not want to be in trouble with you. But sometimes you do need that. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. just like a trainer, personal trainer, I mean, people, you know, hire the help that they need to kind of like hold them accountable and really feel like they're in it with someone to, to reach a goal. So I would yeah. see what you're saying in terms of business and entrepreneurship, no differently. And Maybe. thank you so freaking much. I love of it. Of course. This is so much fun. <laughs> so I much fun. One last thing. Yes. yes. Before we leave, make sure you guys, even if it's not me or whatever, continue to invest in yourself, not just with, you know, professionally cheerleading classes and stuff like that. Invest in your education, invest in growth. Like, I think it's so important to bet on yourself. Like, I know a lot of people will go to Vegas and be like, oh, here's, you know, I hope that I win a thousand dollars, but invest a hundred dollars in yourself, take a class, like get a coach, get a mentor, become a better version of yourself because the only person you can really rely on is yourself anyway, at the end of the day. So. Isn't that the truth? Yes. And hopefully you're building a wonderful team too, Haley, that can help. Because I mean, you know, we're Wonder Women, but you also need, you know, good people around you to to build a team. And so congratulations on all of your growth. Like, I'm so happy for you. Like, thinking about when we first, first met, which... I, you know, people have to listen back to the episode. I can't remember if we told them like how there was like the mystery episode that evaporated into clear, into the clear sky. <laughs> but we have like, it's just been such a journey because I don't think any of the businesses were formed when we first initially met. Um, mm. She does have an episode called Salute You Guys. Um, 
check it out. It was a great interview. And every inf well, all the information about your businesses are is in your link in your bio, right? Because yeah. I still I mean, I love seeking seeking set free. Is that mm -hmm. I kind of want to change my girlfriend spa trip to something like that, because it kind of fell apart with COVID. But like, let's do something a little bit more meaningful than the spa trip, which, Dude. you know, we yeah, would love we'll have to build it. Yes, we'll, we'll have to talk. We'll, talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I awesome. thank you so much, everybody. I'll leave this on uh, the page so you can check it out. And um, I'm excited to hear about you guys connecting because this is just this is I feel like what people needed. Thanks, everybody for joining. Thank you so much, Makiba. Thank you for everyone. Have a great yes. night, everybody. Thank Have a you great so much. Night. Bye. Bye. We'll see you next time for Cheer Chat, y'all. <laughs>